नमस्कार व्यूअर्स हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सेंसर टीवी आई एम टीना झा यू आर वाचिंग हेल्दी इंडिया द सेंटर इज मलिंग डेवलपिंग अ वन नेशन वन पॉलिसी फॉर ऑर्गन डोनेशन एंड ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इन द कंट्री एज वाइडली रिपोर्टेड द यूनियन हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री इज वर्किंग ऑन द पॉलिसी इन कंसल्टेशन विद द स्टेट्स टू कम अप विद यूनिफॉर्म गाइडलाइंस फॉर रजिस्ट्रेशन एलोकेशन एंड अदर एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ द प्रोसेस Now, according to official data, the number of organ transplants has increased from nearly 5,000 in 2013 to over 15,000 in 2022. In fact, India conducts the third highest number of transplants in the world every year, as per estimates. Yet, barely 4% of the patients who require a liver, heart, or kidney transplant manage to get one. So, will the changes in rules help in filling this wide gap between demand and supply? How beneficial will the new rules be? towards increasing the organ donation rate as well as streamlining the procedure of organ donation and transportation in the country all this and much more in this episode of healthy india with two experts who are joining us in the studio i'm pleased to welcome dr sumana aroda senior consultant niti ayog and dr piyush ranjan professor department of medicine all india institute of medical sciences new delhi thank you to both my guests for joining me on this special broadcast Dr Arora let me begin the program today with you so of course the policy has not become a reality it's still a work in progress but if i may begin by asking you what does it entail and what was the need behind bringing such a policy so to answer your question if i could just take a step back and explain the context uh, organ donation organ transplant is the last resort for somebody suffering from end stage organ failure Now how can a patient who needs an organ get an organ there are two ways one through a living organ donation which a near relative can donate however such uh, organ such as heart cannot be taken from a living donor so such organs have to be taken from a diseased donor and also there are many times that uh, there is no near relative fit enough to donate so in such cases you get uh, an organ from a diseased donor Now to get an organ from a diseased donor you have to be on something called a organ recipient list. Right. This is um you know uh, each organ recipient waiting for a diseased organ is put on that list by the clinical team and this is under the supervision of the government agencies. Now currently uh, what wa- has been happening is some states have a domicile requirement which has been recently removed. for example um you know domicile requirements vary from 3 years in some states 7 years 15 years etc so there is interstate variation that has currently been removed the second thing is some states charge registration fee to register the patient on to that um organ waiting list so there is a lot of interstate variation now uh, in the current in uh, scenario people move from state to state for jobs for relocation and for various purposes for example say suppose i moved from karnataka and i am now working in delhi and if i need an organ and i am i do not meet the domicile criteria of karnataka then i cannot be registered in karnataka so uh, the attempt towards one nation one allocation is that organ uh, recipient list is streamlined of course this is something which is still in very very nascent stages uh it needs uh, interstate consultation it needs states to be on board because we must remember that health is a state subject Absolutely. all said and done so it needs multiple stakeholder consultations it needs the states to be on board it is an attempt to help ease the problems that the patient faces and many times that the clinical teams also face absolutely so rightly said the objective dr ranjan is to make the policy more uniform and the procedure the entire procedure of organ donation and transportation very seamless for those who are seeking transplants but what does it do to benefit the large number of people in our country who are waiting endlessly for these transplants yes. because the data says there's a huge gap between the demand and supply uh, ratio so does this policy also if it comes into yes. being aim to address that problem yes it it is just not the uh, for the sake of uniformity and the legal points that are that that would be benefited but apart from this it will bring uh, new avenues new opportunities for the people who are waiting for it as uh, mrs arora was saying that ki there in this stage in the, in the recent time there is lot of relocation people move from one place to another not only for the sake of say uh, job opportunities but for treatment purpose also and if suppose and the organ donation and the organ transplantation is not something that 
is suppose a a person a is requiring any particular organ and and we have another donor b who who want to donate it then you cannot uh, transplant it there are large number of mix and match that needs right. to be done so uh, appropriateness in the term of uh, 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 the um, uh, what we say that ke hla typing and other thing has to be matched so if suppose there is someone who, who if if there is suitable donor and suitable recipient also and if there is another hurdle say as she was saying that ki suppose uh, there is a uh, hurdle like domic domicile criteria so there is something that we can you know easily overcome so the best uh, intention behind this policy is actually to remove all those hurdle that we can actually do we cannot uh, do much with the hl uh, mismatching as the uh, if if there is mismatching between the say what we say the blood uh, uh, blood typing or the type of things then that cannot be done so this is one thing that that will definitely benefit and we we say uh, as we always know that we know that the actual people actual number of people who are getting benefit is far lesser than what uh, is actually required that's right although that has begun to change dr aroda what the official data is saying that the number of organ transplants has increased from somewhere around 5000 in 2013 to about 15000 in 2022 but he he's right that much more needs to be done so if i could you know take you back to understand the larger context of the problem this is about making the procedure seamless but the whole problem is about the 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 unwillingness of people to donate their organs and this could be uh, because of a lot of other reasons so what according to you are some of the reasons that hold indian citizens from you know making a pledge to donate their organs and give a life to others so uh, you quoted some statistics um in 2013 there were close to 5000 transplants in that year and in 2022 they were close to 15000 or it's slightly over 15000 but if you look at the breakup in 2013 there were 800 odd disease donations disease donor transplants that out of that uh, 5000 figure and in 2022 out of 15000 odd there were 2000 odd um, you know disease donor donation do, donor transplants so this itself shows you that the vast majority of transplants that are have happening are living donor transplants um also there's a huge interstate variation if you look at uh, the north south divide so to speak uh, there's the organ donation rates are higher in some states much lower in others multiple reasons i would say one is um socio cultural the religious beliefs uh some uh, uh belief systems uh believe in uh, a post life or the next life so there are these sentiments that you would be born without that particular part in your body in the next life there are and and then we also must remember that most of the transplants are post brain death this is a very very difficult time for the family see they have lost a loved one in that hour of grief for them to take this brave step to decide to donate a part of their loved one's body to save somebody else not known to them in living donation you at least you you giving a part of your body while you are living to a person related to you or for matters of uh, love and affection but in disease donation it's a grieving family with very limited time to decide to donate organs to a loved one and those organs will be utilized for somebody not known to them perhaps they will not be told of the identity right. so these are all very very difficult questions at which uh, dr saab would uh, definitely agree for the clinical team to handle on the spot absolutely so added to this is the socio cultural and other beliefs systems in so society so what are we doing to get rid of this stumbling block is something that i'll come back to you but medically uh, you know you would yes. be dealing with such cases day in and day out how challenging is it for the medical professionals to convince families relatives the kin of the deceased in that hour of grief to you know convince them to donate their organs because as she said there's a lot of socio cultural belief attached to it and you would as family want to maintain the sanctity of the remains of the deceased yeah in the last 15 years of my medical practice i have found that the only thing that drives or probably the most important thing that drives we indian is the emotion so our own belief system there is some basis for that uh, many of them are good 
a larger portion of them actually need to be changed. So coming to the dilemma that actually we, uh, we, we come across, especially the first step is to start the dialogue. So the first thing, is if, uh, if, if we want to, if we are disclosing a bad news to the family, that the chances, the likelihood of the survival of uh, the near and dear one of uh, a family is very less. After that, after another day, we then at that point of time, we started start discussing or open the dialogue that ki, will they be eager to donate the organ. As he has said, and we all know that the window of opportunity to harvest the organ is very narrow. So there are large number of things, the uh, other modalities like the uh, uh, group of people who can actually harvest organ, that they are the surgeon, the place where uh, uh, actually most of the deaths they occur in the critical care unit. So, so, so we do need we do need to maintain the fine balance between the the two team. So, whenever we start discussing the a particular family member that ki, these are the options. The first thing that comes to the family member that ki, will this affect the quality of care? So, this is one thing that we actually struggle. There are, uh, yes, a large number of people, they do pledge that ki, uh, after death, I want to donate my organ. But even in this case, the near, the family member, they can actually disregard the will of the, uh, the person who is dying. So, this is one thing. It is, yes, it is difficult uh, because at that point of time, uh, especially when the death is occurring in a young, young, per, young person, so they find it difficult to adjust themselves, accept it. But over the period of time, I, I, from my personal experience, I can say that now people are more open it. The, the barrier is not in the in in say donate, donating a particular organ, but the barrier is much in the accepting it. And barrier is also in this particular belief that ki if we would agree with the donation, will it affect the quality, quality of, care of care that could have any way uh, could have improved the chance of survival. So they, this is the ma mo most important thing that I find. Yes, I do agree that ki we, uh, there are large number of belief system. What is what about life after death? Yes, but uh, in especially in the metropolitan city. People are now more getting uh, more open to the, the idea of donate, donation. But I think, as, as you rightly said, again, that, that, that challenge, that it's not like a financial will uh, that once you've written it, it will be accepted. Yes. So it, it's a will, uh, Dr. Aroda, that even if the person uh, has, you know, expressed or pledged to uh, donate the organ, the family members, the relatives can always say that, you know, it's not acceptable to us. So is it time that... To, in, in order to address all of these problems that we just discussed, there should be more conversations and there is need to normalize conversations around organ donation. So not leave it to the last hour to convince the family, perhaps normalize it in a way that it is acceptable to everyone, that it's something for the larger good. Absolutely. We must always remember that organ transplants is not just a very complex procedure clinically, but it also has very complex administrative and legal ramifications around it. So conversations, whether they start at the school level, college level, in fact, even the medical students uh, need more awareness. The doctor community within themselves need more awareness. Right. Um, and another thing uh, which I may add is metro cities. There is uh, some amount of distrust uh, among the patients. The minute they hear, you know, oh, if there's an attempt, at, if not put correctly, of course, there are mul multiple cases to the contrary, but if not put correctly, they uh, they also kind of doubt the clinical teams that they are going to steal away our organs and not save my loved one. So that's another element. And is this distrust also because uh, you know there have been cases of black marketing? How scamsters have actually thrived on uh, convincing people to sell their organs? Has that also been a problem that we in India have well, struggled with? This might have been actually uh, in media. We tend to sort of uh, glorify the rare things. You know what? Uh, making it more sensationalized. I'm not saying that 
every media house is like but this. But one bad example can shaken the entire yeah, system. But, can, but can probably if we, I work in a government organization and I can vouch upon that, that there cannot be, there is no possibility of even the single incidents like this. So we in our institution, we at AIMS work for the society. So we are different people. This is one thing. So there is nothing like any personal gain. But I do agree with you that it all depends on the belief and their own eagerness to do this noble job. And uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 there there had been certain incidences that that we have heard in we have read about that in in various newspaper or like that. But I do believe that such cases are very rare, and it should not stop the larger cause the the, the, the larger cause of benefit. So this is this is how it is, and I feel that ki the probably one important step that all of us can take is to glorify each each successful attempt of organ donation. So if say someone will accept this, someone will know that ki taking a bold decision at this difficult time will give him or her a pleasure of uh, uh, happiness that the recipient will get because of the decision that one has taken today will probably motivate someone mm, from taking this decision. You know, uh, Dr. Arora, we keep talking about how we need to be in sync with the changing times. So when we say normalizing conversations around organ donation, uh, how do we ensure that from the right stage, you said, you know, it has to start at the school stage. Do we need to include it in curriculum? Should it be, you know, added as a special course for students to uh, understand the importance of organ donation and to understand the idea behind how you can give much more even after your lifetime? Yes, it will be good to see it added in the curriculum for sure. And um, do are there efforts being made towards that yes, direction? Yes, I believe so. I believe so. They are being efforts uh, towards this direction. And as uh, you know, Dr. Rajan, yes. she was saying that you know uh, a lot of medical students have to also participate and and take that kind of pledge. There is ne a need to increase awareness among them also at the right time. So, from the medical fraternity, has there been any kind of positive movement towards ensuring that the kind of discussion that we are having today starts at the right place with the right people? So, before uh, yeah, I will uh, I will take uh, take this question also. But before that, I would suggest uh, there are three different domains. One is knowledge, second is attitude, and third one is practice. So knowledge is one thing. So in this particular context, one can, one can impart the knowledge by saying that ki, these are the various clauses and these are the benefits, these are the statistics. So attitude and ultimately the belief has to be changed by, by, by other means beyond knowledge. So that they can, they, this, the, this can be done probably by glorifying each successful attempt. Number one, and number two, uh, so far as uh, the organ donation and the uh, and, and the awareness among the medical student students and fraternity is concerned, yes, we do uh, celebrate the organ donation day every year. So uh, probably thrice, three thrice in a year, we there are uh, uh, symposium and seminars. They are being organized. So. Many of us actually, along with blood donation, we do pledge for organ donation. So uh, this this is the stat this this is this may not be the same status in the small cities or in the state medical college, but definitely at times the many of the many students they are actually inclined to pledge for organ donation. We hope this you know that say. the similar policies and similar measures are also adopted large, yes. at, at large scale in other colleges also. But is there also need to perhaps make the procedure simpler for those who are donating? So if you have, you know, uh, and if, if they at that grieving time have to undergo a, several steps, it, it, it wouldn't be something yes. that would so, be encouraging for the family. So if we have to sort of not streamline it and make it simpler for them, so there should be a one-stop one point person who does all the work is that also something that this, be done? this is already in place you know you have grief counselors you have transplant coordinators i would say they are the crux of the entire program and they handhold the patient family through that entire traumatic period that they have to go through and um, i think that one stop person one point of contact is already there and this um, single allocation system is an effort towards streamlining and reducing the drudgery further if it goes through. 
so if there if anyone decides for organ donation then there is no hurdle so so there is no difficulty in so difficulty is is probably in taking the decision but you see if a person who is dying there is at least 3 4 5 or in india at least 10 people who are you know sort of uh, is has a say in this particular decision so if someone agrees maybe his brother or sister will not agree so and, uh, if if one of the son of a uh, sister sons agreed then does he has that much of uh, uh, belief that much of strength uh, strength in himself that he can actually deny the or try to convince his own siblings so these are important points you know dr arora in a society like ours what we've seen is laws wouldn't make that much of an impact as much would people uh, people's participation so we saw how cleanliness uh, and, and this is something that the prime minister spoke about he made it into a people's movement and suddenly oh, we, we began to see the change so the kind of change in mindset that we are talking about the fact that we want to break that stereotype break the taboo and you know normalize conversations around organ donation we need to make it a people's movement absolutely it has to be a jan andolan and uh, it cannot be left to the doctors it cannot be left to the government it cannot be left to the patients it has to be a jan andolan it has to be a movement of of the people and that is when i think we would see it successful instead of depending on uh, laws and depending on single cases it has to be a jan andolan and if i may you know angdan जीवन दान अंगदान महादान एक खामोशी सौ मुस्कान सो वेन यू लीव यूर लीविंग विद अ लेगेसी फॉर एट टू नाइन पीपल हु कैन गेन लाइफ एंड मल्टीपल अदर्स हु कैन गेन गेन टिश्यूज वेदर इट्स आई स्किन बोन्स एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा so it has to be a jan andolan absolutely and the kind of change that we are talking about it's going to take ages if we only depend on the government only depend on the medical fraternity to bring that kind of change so the kind of change that we would like to see is something that we will all have to of course participate in and make it into a jan andolan for it to be a su- uh, success but as uh, you know both the doctors rightly suggested there are multiple organs that we as individuals can donate so no matter how much you do for the society while you are uh, alive there is much more that you can do even beyond this lifetime so with that hope that all of us who have not pledged to uh, donate our organs will do so the procedures are quite seamless and the government is working towards making it more seamless but it's just about change in the mindset and the will to do so so that having been said i'll have to wind up the program thank you to both my guests for joining us thank on you. this edition of healthy india and taking us through the the challenges but also the way ahead in dealing with the uh, organ donation in our country so that's it from us on this broadcast thank you to you viewers for your time as well i'll see you same time next week with another topic and a different set of panel as well take good care of yourselves and keep watching sunset tv